Wherever the weather, a lot of you are probably heading off on holiday soon and wondering whether or not it's worth taking your drone along or which is the best drone to take with you. Look, after two weeks in the Outer Hebrides and I've just got back from another week hiking in Wales, I thought I'd share some of my experiences and some ideas to help you decide whether or not it's worth taking it along and how to make life a little bit easier for yourself. Uh, first off, if you are heading overseas, then check out uavcoach.com. I normally find it easier to just search for the Drone Rules Plus whatever country you're visiting to. That normally takes you straight through to their right page. Either way, I find their information is comprehensive and it quickly alerts you to problems. If you're visiting a country that has got some harsher rules, like Turkey, for instance, which has got some brilliant rules to make sure you cannot take your drone into their country unless you're happy for it to be seized at customs. Uh, let's see, if you are registered in the UK and heading to Europe, then sadly your operator ID and your flyer ID will not be recognised in European EASA countries. So you do need to register again over there. Now you can either register it in the country that you're about to visit, or maybe check out the Cyprus drone registration site, which only charges 15 euros for your operator ID. It lasts three years and it will be valid in all EASA countries. Uh, finally, if you are flying to wherever you're going, remember to check out the dangerous goods page of whatever airline it is that you're uh, using because you need to double check their rules and policies specifically on lithium batteries. Uh, generally, I pack the larger drones like the Mavic 3 or the Air 3 in the hold, in the suitcase, uh, but the lithium batteries always come in on the carry-on into the cabin with me because that is normally an air, uh, most airlines' policies. Uh, smaller drones like the Mini 4 Pro, I always just chuck it straight into my uh, carry-on luggage anyway. I normally put it in one of these small bags and I just pack the whole lot into my carry-on. Um, the X-Ray operators at security, they've seen it all before. Um, I have never been asked to open up my bag to show the drones inside, so you shouldn't have too many problems. So that's the glam world of international travel covered, I think. What about uh, a bit more close to home camping, hiking in your home country, like I've pretty much been doing all year? Uh, well, look. Um, to be honest, I think behind me you can see many, many different models of drones, but in truth it always comes down to these two, the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3. And uh, these are the two drones I just take with me whenever I go camping because, uh, well, good reason really. You're pretty much covered for any scenario if you're in a town or an area that's popular with tourists and you can have other people around, then the Mini 4 Pro is obviously going to give you the results you want. But if you're out in the open countryside or climbing mountains, then the Air 3, I think, is uh, it's obviously smaller and lighter than the Mavic 3, but in my opinion, it is just as capable of giving you brilliant results. Um, I've done various wind tests for all the models over the years, Mini 2, 3 and 4 series. They are brilliant in strong winds up to around 25, 30, even 35 mile an hour gusts, but they do have their limits. And last week in Wales, I think I finally found that limit for my Mini 4 Pro. The poor little thing really, really fought the wind and it was clear it was too windy for it. And that is where the Air 3 comes in, flying literally as if there was no wind at all. Um, I find the Air 3 is the ultimate beast for flying in strong winds. And yet, of course, it's small enough and light enough to still slip in your backpack, especially if you're using these little padded bags. And of course, another advantage of having these two drones is that you only need the one remote. This remote will uh, obviously control both of these drones, so you're saving on space as well as weight. Now, all the mini series and obviously the Air 3 and the Mavic 3, they all use uh, USB-C charging now. Uh, obviously with the Air 3, you will definitely need a decent charger or you will literally be waiting hours and hours for that battery to charge, which just isn't necessary. I've done power and charging videos, but if you're camping light, uh, without a car, I mean, then I still think you cannot go wrong with uh, this little beast here. This is the OmniCharge 40C Plus. Um, it's not cheap, but it is an amazing little bit of kit that uh, will charge your drones a good three or four times and crucially has got a 100 watt USB-C direct power outlet, which means it will work perfectly for the Air 3. Um, I've mentioned these padded bags a few times to be honest because that's because I do find them really, really useful. Um, these old ones happen to be from the Air 2, I think. Um, last time I looked on the website of DJI, these were not in stock. But in truth, you just do a search, any photography store, even eBay, for a uh, soft, small padded pouch and you'll get a, a million options. But for me, you can keep... Uh, one for the, uh, the drone, another for another drone, one for the remote control. Everything is then protected. It won't get scratched 
or damaged. Um, of course, in saying that, the proper cases, the hard cases, they're going to give you the very best protection for your drones. But I'm simply saying that I have found these small, soft padded pouches useful for when I've got a small backpack and I'm out hiking for the day where my drone is only a small part of all the stuff I need to take out on that particular day. And to be honest, that's the point of this video. I wanted to share with you what's worked and what hasn't worked for me over the years, hopefully to give you an idea of how to make the best of things when you are heading away and to make life easy for yourself, be it a weekend camping in the mountains or flying halfway around the world. Because unless you're heading to Turkey or on an ocean cruise, yeah, cruises, don't bother taking your drone there. They really don't like that at all. But look, unless you're going to uh, somewhere like that, then I think it really is good to be taking your little drone and getting those aerial shots. I mean, the best camera is the one that's with you when you need it. And whether or not it's the mini or a larger model, if you ain't got it with you, it's not gonna be much use at all, is it? So take a look at some of the stuff I got up to in uh, Wales and the Hebrides. Uh, you can find that on Instagram. And there's Ian underscore in underscore London. I will post links to all that I can in the notes below. You can also check out a link to audio. That's my new music provider for making YouTube and Instagram videos. I've got a link and a code for 70% off a year's subscription with them. So take a look at that below. But look, either way, as ever, if you like this little video, give me a little thumbs up, help it along the way. That's about it for today. Uh, so wherever you end up this summer or uh, I don't know, winter, if you're down under, either way, have fun, happy flying.